They're paying good money for it. Japan was short on resources. They needed the scrap metal. No one looked as to what the Japanese were doing with that scrap metal, but they were busily building tanks, planes, bombs, rifles, bayonets that stabbed our boys in the heart. And, of course, Karl Marx said that when the last capitalist is hung, we'll hang him with the rope that he manufactured. All of this wisdom can be found in Government Zero. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Savage States of America, me. I used to do that in the show in the 90s. That was a lot of fun. We had a whole soundbite on it. I just got a great report from my agent out of New York City. We just got reports. You sold almost 10,000 pre-orders before the book even hit the stores today. Now, that means if the book sells another, I don't know, 10,000 this week, it's got to be in the top 10 of books. And the message will be government zero, no borders, no language, no culture. The conservative talk radio host, Michael Savage, insists that the government is out of control. Uh, you can see how it will read, and you can see why they're going to try and bury it, but... Hey, what can I tell you? Let's go to Karen, WMAL. Fire away, Karen. What's your question or comment? Yes, Dr. Savage. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm on my way to uh, pick up my parents. I'm going to put them in the car. We're going to go look for your book here in Liberal, Maryland, which will be a small miracle if we can find it. But I'm sorry I don't have it to refer to. I wanted to ask you about the 40 points that you have for us to take back our country. And I'm hoping that one of them is some sort of nonviolent revolution wherein we withhold our tax dollars from this unbridled spending government. You are a thousand percent correct. And in my 40 actions to save America, there is not one word calling for violence. First of all, first of all, it's illegal. Second of all, it's absurd, and I'll tell you why. Violence will lead to what's going on in Syria. Millions displaced, hundreds of thousands killed. Violence is never the solution, despite what you may read on the Internet. Yes, you can use violence to defend yourself if it comes down to that, but never, ever do we ever talk about violence as a solution on this program. Now, having said that, the number one action to save America is close the borders completely for seven years. Deport all illegal aliens in American prisons. Notice what I said. Woody Allen will say, Savage said, deport all illegal aliens. I said in American prisons. Repeal the anchor babies law. Now, that's not really a law. It's an amendment which can be repealed, by the way. It was written for uh, to make slaves full citizens. It was never intended to bring foreigners into the country and to uh, bless them with citizenship. What is more cohesive than point five? Make English the official language of the United States. All ballots. Do you know in San Francisco for 20 years now, they've had ballots in over six, seven, eight, nine, ten languages? Now, why would they have done that? One reason. To make sure that non-citizens could vote to keep the corrupt degenerates who run this city in power. Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the sheeple. Stay in a line, my friend. We'll send you an extra copy for Hanukkah, Christmas, or Ramadan on the Savage Nation. I'll be back with two more hours with God's will and your listenership right here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. You ever see those people at like a wedding or Much an event that sing that you're embarrassed for? Well, that's me today. <laughs> How about when your uncle gets up and sings and you cringe and your toes curl on your shoes? We always had a relative like that. There was an aunt who sang, and her husband loved her to death, and he would sit there like, oh, he was in love with her. We would all like, oh, my God. Even when you were eight years old, you knew she couldn't sing. He loved her. So to him, the, view, the, the, the voice was beautiful. So when I sing this, I mean, I feel like that uncle, but what can you do? What do I care? 
what do I got to lose at this point if I sing my way on a day that I'm celebrating? Because once a year we celebrate together on the Savage Nation. It's usually on book release day. Last October, just, uh, yeah, last October it was Stop the Coming Civil War. And now it's government zero. And we'll have to see which way the uh, chips may fall or which way the cookie crumbles, as they say. I don't know what's going to be the end here. I got to tell you this. The expectations are enormous for this book. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll level with you. I don't think that there's any secret here. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but hey, last year the publisher printed about 50,000 copies of Stop the Coming Civil War. And you went to the bookstores and you swamped the bookstores and they could you couldn't find the books. And they were caught short. They kept going back to press. They went up to three, four, five, six printings in two weeks. So this year, they wanted to make sure there were enough books for my loyal listeners. I think they printed like 150,000 first printing. That's an enormous number of books. And I don't know whether there's 150,000 people out there who care enough about America or want to arm themselves with the information and facts they need to argue to, to save the nation. I hope so. I hope so. But I, all I can do is, is say to you, thank you very much if you did go out to support my message and uh, share it if you can. Let's go to the callers. John Line 8, WMAL, Washington, D.C. Go ahead, please. Hey, Mike. Great show. Listen, thank you. I'm law enforcement, and I love listening to you, man. You're great. And uh, I ordered your book about four weeks ago when I first heard you on the radio. And uh, I said, hey, I like this guy. And look. There's a war on police, and you, you've mentioned it several times, and it's happened ever since Obama made that statement about the professor up in, uh, I believe it was Boston. That's right. When he took the side of the of the anti-police professor, Obama has declared a war on police in order to lay the groundwork for creating a uh, federal police force and el eliminate all community policing. You know that. Oh, yeah. I know it from day one. Now, you know, Zero Police, Chapter 12 of uh, Government Zero. I'm going to read a paragraph. Uh, Obama's endgame, a federal police force. After yet another city lay in flames thanks to his divisive rhetoric and relentless war on local police, the grand illusionist in the White House had this to say, and I quote him. And I said, as usual, the Presidente glosses over the violent crimes committed by rioters and looters, calling them dysfunction, while making excuses for the inexcusable mayhem perpetrated by the thugs. But that's just more of what we've heard from the Marxist in chief since he took office. What he proposes to do about the crisis he helped create is even worse. Obama is working around the clock in the remaining months of his reign of terror to make certain he destroys the soldiers of our immune system, the police. And I'll let you come uh, back on in now, John. You know better than all of us that right now the thugs feel empowered. They know the police are intimidated as a result of this revolutionary in the White House. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct, because why would they put their rear end on the line when they're not going to be backed by their police chief, by their citizens, by their paycheck? And it's... Well, look, I, I basically think that there should be a, a quiet boycott across America by police. And I think that that's what we're seeing. We've heard from the Chicago, uh, whoever he may be, saying, I think it was even the, the, the mayor of Chicago, of all people, one of Obama's dearest lieutenants or friends said that the police have become fetal, F-E-T-A-L, in their unwillingness to put their lives in the line for fear of being sued by the thugs who are committing the crimes. Well, guess who caused this retraction of the police in America? It's none other than a divisive revolutionary in the White House and his minions. You know that. Mr. Savage, I'm sure you know this. Take a look at the Freddie Gray incident in Baltimore and look at the homicide and the non-fatal shooting increase for that incident. Because the police are going to handle their calls well, you've you've died out, and I'm going to send you a free copy of uh, Government Zero if you can uh, stay in the line. Yes, Baltimore has gone up in flames as a result of Obama's flaming rhetoric, Eric Holder's flaming re rhetoric, Al Sharpton, the street thugs, flaming rhetoric. Baltimore went up in flames, and instead of arresting the rioters, they arrested the police. It's a terrible story, but the corruption in Baltimore is not a new story. Baltimore is about the second most corrupt city in America, next to San Francisco. But there are deep familiar links between the corruption in these cities that I don't need to uh, uh, point out right now. At the end of the day, we understand what the goal is. The goal is to federalize the police force and have all roads lead 
to the White House. WBAP, John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, what's on your mind? What happened today? Hey, Michael, I can report that in uh, suburban uh, Dallas, your book in Costco was placed very nicely. I was there early this morning and had the top right corner and with very well placement. And God bless Costco. Everyone go in there and buy your books and buy some food at the same time. Buy some discount wine, cheese, food, books. <laughs> well, that's nice to hear that they don't what they don't have the green haired uh, people with rings in their nose in the in the book section. Is that why? It's pretty civilized in the uh, in Costco. And well, because Costco is not primarily a bookstore; it's a store. Now, you see, here's an interesting thing. I've been a writer my my entire life since I'm a kid. And people who go into bookstores are usually frustrated writers, and they think that by selling books, they're uh, a combination of whoever their heroes may be. I don't know who they are today, but let's say Tolstoy, Dostoevsky in my day, Ernest Hemingway, Henry Miller. They all think that they're secretly the greatest novelist in America, but, uh, but they haven't been discovered yet, so they're willing to take a job for a few dollars an hour to be around books. And by being around books somehow, they become a great writer themselves. And therefore, they become censors and editors uh, by burying books, hiding books. You see, you get the picture. Well, thank you, my friend. Thanks for that kind report out of Costco territory. I know many of you out there don't believe in the Savage Nation, but I say to you, if you step up right now, and if you take the holy water, and you take the wafer, and you eat that wafer, and you drink that water, you'll become an honorary member of the Savage Nation, and by doing so, you'll save this fair country. <laughs> I'm just letting go. It's been a long time in coming. It's been a long time in coming. Here's another report coming out of Pennsylvania. Mike, you had a different experience. What happened? Yes, uh, I proudly purchased uh, Government Zero, uh, and I noticed uh, four or five of the books uh, were bent on the same spot. Uh, you know, you have to work pretty hard to do that on a hard cover. So I, I mentioned it to the clerk. I said, uh, did this happen in shipping, or do you have an in-house saboteur? And she wow. Also, oh, someone bent the covers in the bookstore? Yes, uh, not all of them, but half of them. And I looked around on other books that were in the current affairs. It wasn't up front. It was, it was front and center in the current affairs. But there were no other books that were bent. So my you know, well, I, I, the, you know bent, the bent people in America would bend the book about America that, they, that we love. And here's all I can say. If you go in a bookstore and you find somebody uh, defacing or damaging my books, take a picture of them and send it to my Facebook account. We will try to get them prosecuted to the full uh, extent of the law. I can guarantee you the bookstore is not doing it. It's got to be a disgruntled communist loser uh, doing it. You know what I'm saying? But I'll send you a fresh, clean copy while they last uh, for free. Breaking news. Let's have the breaking news sound of Robert. We just got this in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's breaking news, but it'll go nowhere. Here we go. House Republicans. Introduce measure to impeach IRS Commissioner Koskinen. House Republicans, yeah, on Tuesday introduced a resolution to impeach IRS Commissioner John Koskinen, accusing him of making false statements under oath and failing to comply with a subpoena, blah, 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 blah. Okay. The day anyone from the Obama administration goes to jail or even loses a pension is the day that, well, let us say I'll eat one of my own books. But it will have to have ketchup on it, otherwise I won't be able to digest it. Ketchup goes with everything, <laughs> by the way. You may say I have prosaic taste, but i got to tell you the truth. That ketchup is my favorite sauce. I had a, f well, a, a, someone I work with, a lawyer in Washington, a very nice guy. Uh, it ended on a bad note, but he was a nice guy. The overbilling, you know, about 30 grand overbilling. He told me his father, who lived to 98, I asked him, what's your father's secret? He said he put ketchup on everything. Well, I know from having a background in the field that ketchup is, uh, sure, it's got a lot of sugar in it. It's got a lot of this and that. But all the condensed tomato sauce in there is really quite healthful because of uh, the lycopene. Uh, inherent in that vegetable called the tomato. Yes, indeed. The tomato, little understood vegetable. That's why everyone loves Italian sauce. That's why everyone loves Italian cuisine. It's that old tomato sauce. And you can tell a restaurant by its tomato sauce, by the way. There's no question about it. Did you notice that? The great restaurants have the greatest sauce. I mean, this is a given. It's a well-known fact. I don't know. I can't. I, I find better sauce in a jar than I do in San Francisco. And I'm not knocking anyone out here. There are places that still have a little bit on the sauce side that's, uh, you know, Italian-like. 
But I find that they spice it too much here to accommodate the tastes of the chefs who come from south of the border. Not knocking that cuisine. Not knocking the, the, the cuisine, but it's not the same as Italian food. Italian food, 